Julie, every young artist dreams of creating a ripple and, and you know now with the internet with Twitter and, and things can just be sort of instantaneous all over the world at a push of a button. Do you remember the first time that you said, I want to create a ripple in the world, I want to do something that affects people, whether I'm known for it or not, but I just want to be part of something? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is not, not exactly what you're asking, but is that um, I lived in LA in the, when the smog was very, very bad. And I would get up every morning and listen to the radio station and they would come on and the announcer would be what I call selling the weather and say, and in Los Angeles today, there is no smog. And I'd be like, oh my God. So I tried to figure out how to address that in film. And I didn't do very well um, doing it in a, in a kind of, um, you know, way, head on way. So I finally was able to do it with humor. Uh, and I had, it was a, you know, just kind of straight exploitation picture about called, um, I think it was summer school teachers. And uh, and so they, this girl gets up in the morning and she raises the window and looks out at the smog and coughs. And the radio announcer comes on and says, and in Los Angeles today, there is no smog. And it always got a laugh, but I thought, maybe somebody thought about it afterwards. Um, I didn't give up. I'm very persistent, which I think you have to be as a producer. And I decided that I was going to track down who was allowing the radio stations to say there's no smog in LA today when clearly, um, oh, I forgot. <laughs> After he says there's no smog today, the girl la uh, coughs. So she raises the window, sees the smog. The radio announcer comes on and says, in Los Angeles today, there is no smog, and she coughs. So I tracked down for, through the radio station. I started by calling them and saying, why are you saying there's no smog? And they said, well, because the, I think it was the, called the Air Quality Management District in those days, um, has levels uh, below which they say it's not smog. And I said, levels for what? And they said, well, they only measure four things. So it turned out there were some things that were very carcinogenic that might be at very high levels, but they would still be within the rights to say no smog because it didn't appear on the list of what was being monitored by the AQMD. Then I went to the state uh, and, and reached um, the head of the Air Quality Management District and took him to breakfast and said, this should not be allowed to happen, and you know it. And then Jerry Brown appointed me to, to the Air Resources Board. Anyway, it's a much longer story. But yes, I thought, in, in kind of my naivete, but on the other hand, eventually people did make a difference, so I wasn't the only one who was going that route and trying to think about it. Whereas before that, I think there had been a different attitude about smog, which I discovered when my mother told me she thought it was crazy to, to try to do anything about smog. I, of course, thought she was crazy to even suggest that I shouldn't try to do something about smog. And finally, I said to her one day, when she made the comment as we were driving into Los Angeles, I get so excited when I smell the smog. I said, Mother, why? And she said, because it means jobs. So my mother had lived through the depression. So she looked at smoke a completely different way than I did. Eventually she came to see things my way. Interesting. Yeah, I know there's a lot of people with old cars that have really fought the California smog laws because it's, it's so hard to get an older car smogged and to, uh, to have it passed. Anyway, they stopped announcing no smog today. They stopped that. So at least accomplished that. And, and so what would you tell a, a young person that wants to create a ripple and whether it's something creative or to you know better the air quality? Well, I think what I see and think about for my children and what I think about you know looking back on my time of you know being young, like in my 20s and my 30s, is that I could have done more but I didn't know that I could. 
So I think it's that. I think you can do more than you think you can. That's what I would, would like to say in, in these areas of, that you're passionate about.